Rising family. Y'all know we got a bunch of dogs that we selling over here in the Gambia. Now this one right here is the pit bull that looks just like her mother. And I think we call her Hershey. Hershey or chocolate, whatever. This is the boy and he looks just like the mama. See his pointed ears right there? A lot of flies out here, guys, but that's okay. We dealing with it though. So we get him to the land and get him in their new houses. But anyway, this bad boy right here, Got like uh, 80 to 90% pit bull in him. And that right there is, I think that one's called Hershey. And she looks just like the father. And I think she's probably got like 80, 90%, um, what do you call it, um, uh, bulldog. So what we want to do, what we always do is get these two uh, boy and girl out the litter and breed them. So right here, got the pit bull, and then Excuse me, this, yeah, pit bull, and then this one right here, the bulldog. So we gonna breed these two right here. And that right there is a Gambian with a pit bull mix from previous encounters. And this right here is Kiki dog that came from La, La Mean Lodge. And that right there is Honey. She's already got some more uh, puppies inside. Now guys, we cannot keep the pit bull mix See, let's take a closer look at uh, honey. See how her ears, okay, honey. See how her ears are mixed right there, like, see right there? That's how I can tell the uh, pit bull. See right here, this boy right here, got the same. But she, more like a father, has the um, uh, bulldog mix. So anyway, hey, these guys are too friendly. Too friendly, I can't wait to get them to the land. But look what they always wanna do. When I come outside, want to chew on my shoe and everything now hopefully you guys don't think I'm mean or anything but the kids like to play uh, ball right outside the gate and they're constantly kicking the ball to the uh, gate so when it comes over here I'm not going to give it back to them for them to keep rowling up the dogs and stuff like that um, so I just keep it in the yard so somehow somebody done kicked it out of here and stuff but anyway it is what it is. So anyway, thought I'd do something different today. Now, our first time in five years being in the Gambia that our garden or our outdoor yards look like this without any plants. Now, you know the dogs right there tearing that up right there, but we can, that's an easy fix. So anyway, this is the worst that our outdoor gardens have ever looked because we've always had an abundance of plants out here, but those of y'all that are following our journey know that we've relocated the plants from the garden, from the rental gardens out to the abundance of land. So this right, we, we had about a hundred banana plants in the back of the rental house as far as, and as far as the front too. So we've uh, relocated them all. And this is the last one that's standing. And as you could already see, there's a little baby one over there, that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four right there, and this big one in the middle, which is five, to be transplanted soon too, okay? And so out here, uh, pretty much is a mess, but that's okay. <laughs> it could all be uh, fixed up later. Now this right here, I didn't particularly like uh, the tomatoes that came out of this right here because the soil was totally different. Now, for those of y'all that are been gardening a lot longer than we have, hey, our hats off to you. But, uh, you know, we're still in that learning process. So the soil from this right here, these tomatoes right here are totally different from the other soils that we've used in the past. And so when I tried the tomatoes, you know, the texture of the tomatoes was not to the extent that it was out there at the land. And so anyway, uh, again, in that experimental mode, I just went ahead and let them grow. And so anyway, um, we're gonna go ahead and uproot some of these right here. Now we still got the, the watercress, which I love, and they still taste marvelous, effervescent and stuff. And somehow I think there's some snails out here. Sweet Juicy Mama pointed them out at the land. But anyway, what I'm gonna do today, since I haven't been out here in quite some time, and you guys know 
I was feeling ill. I've got a bunch of uh, seeds that I want to plant. So I'm going to find a spot for them out here somewhere. Here's some uh, papayas that have been growing. You know, over here, just like the soil is so fertile, all you got to do is just throw anything in the dirt and it'll grow. Only thing you got to do is be able to, to, to manage it and uh, keep the nutrients in there if you chose to and stuff, okay? So right here, this is looking pretty pretty bad by our past standards, but anyway, hey, it is what it is. So what I want to do is utilize some of these buckets over here to plant some jackfruit. Got some jackfruit seeds. Sweet Juicy Mama's been making uh, some sauces with some jackfruit, and she put them on some chicken wings yesterday, and they were delicious, guys. So anyway, I got some uh, avocado pears that are in there. <laughs> That's a much better view right there. Uh, some avocado um, pears. Now, you know, we've experimented and found out what works and what doesn't work. Now, I've lost about, conservatively speaking, I've lost about 200 uh, avocado plants out there. Put them in the wrong position or they stayed in the bucket like this right here too many years. So I took that on the chin and learned from that. No big deal. Because guess what? It's my schedule. It's my schedule to learn. And those of y'all that don't like my schedule, hey, create your own schedule. We'll compare notes later on. But you know what? I know you're not going to do anything. So, so much for that. So anyway, I lost about 200 uh, avocado plants. And so on the next 200, I guess what I know not to do. What I did previously. Okay. That's how you do that and stuff. Learn from it. All right. So I've lost about... 200 avocados and I've lost about 200 papayas placing them in the wrong position out there at the land but that's okay guess what the next 200 papayas that are being planted right now are going are growing in a different location you see what I'm saying and they're booming and stuff okay so anyway hey learn as you go is not a problem all right because guess what it's your schedule at the end of the day. So anyway, let's see what these guys are doing back here. They love the fight. Now, uh, it's so many different breeds, guys. Let me, I'm bouncing around a little bit, but I kept hearing something fight behind me. But there's so many different breeds that we want to just curtail it down to just two. Pit bulls and the boxer mix. You know, these, these gambling breeds, they... They're fine and dandy, but, uh, you know, they got to go. You know what I'm saying? They breed like wildfire, and we don't like going through the the surplus of uh, dog food. I mean, now if we were making it, totally different story, but, you know, we're not constantly making it. Now, the neighbors, um, jump it off again. Now, this is something that we weren't too successful in either, growing these um, passion fruit. Now, the monkeys come in here and they like to bite them before they're done and just chunk them on the ground. You know, we don't like that. But anyway, we see how structure growing takes place. You just let them vine out, and these little bad boys just keep going on and on and on and on. And they just go all the way on back like that, that there. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to fix that. Yeah. Hear this all night, guys. But anyway, let me get on back over here and start planting my uh, new seeds. And I'll come back a little bit later on and show you the new uh, boxes or the new containers that I've filled up, okay? Bye for now. Join me on the fourth annual homecoming and pilgrimage to Sierra Leone on December 28, 2021 through January 9, 2022. We will be exploring this beautiful country and eligible individuals will be receiving Sierra Leonean citizenship and passports. For more details, check out our website, sierraleonepilgrimage.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel, Go Ham Lifestyle Vlogs, because we all need an Africa escape plan. All right, family. 
almost through. Halfway through this bad boy, I was like, man, I want to stop. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of getting a little tiresome. But for the therapeutic session only, that's what kept me going because I'm like, you know what? I could be sitting up in the house thinking about the colonial virus or who all is getting affected by this or the sister not liking the brother or the brother not liking the sister or two losers want to beef it out with each other rather than go after the devils and stuff. You see what I'm saying? So you could be doing all this stuff, which is meaningless, or you could be out here doing something therapeutic in nature. You know what I'm saying? And uh, looking at the growth or nature or planting uh, different um, seeds like Jack Bruce or lemons or limes or uh, uh, avocado pears, you know, things of that sort. So, I mean, you know, uh, you tell me in the comment section which one you think is better. In there thinking about some insignificant garbage about what our known enemies are doing to us or going out here meditating and contemplating a definitive action against the devils and stuff, you know. And if you look back there, you see there's a big old snail thing uh, right there. We're going to redo those this year, too. Uh, again, this rainy season is peculiar in relation to last year's rainy season. But it's okay, you know. Um, before we went into this rainy season, I had told myself this is going to be the best rainy season over here yet. And halfway through, we were like, wow, you know, this is strange. Not a lot of rain. But then again, me and Sweet Juicy Mama kind of took a little turn for the worse as far as health. But she was feeding me some everything. I mean, man, sometimes I think I wasn't going to make it because she was giving a brother uh, uh, Kalalu, uh, 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 Moringa seeds, black seed oil. I mean, just every 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 time I turned around, she was feeding me some kind of uh, uh, organic crop seeds or some type of uh, herbal supplemental tea and stuff. But you know what? The, the brother got through, and I feel 90% uh, recovered right now. Still got a little 10% that I want to, you know, mean your mouth with a little bit and stuff. But apart from that, you know, I feel great and stuff. You know, she she got a brother through that and stuff as well as herself, too. But on the same token, you hear about our counterparts in America who didn't make it through, you know, what I'm saying completely dependent upon the devil systems of uh, jab, jab, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, thank God. Uh, the almighty ancestors, we was in a position to have not been there to have to go through that BS. And so anyway, we only get stronger here on. And for those of y'all that are motivated by our path and what we're doing of separating from devils, buying a little chunk of land, whether it's swamp land or whatever the case may be, grow your own stuff and provide your own Reemphasize that. Provide your own food, vegetables, herbs, spices. You know what I'm saying? For your benefit. Sweet Juicy Mom and I was looking at the news a little while back, and they was looking at, and they were showing how uh, others, and that's how I'm gonna classify them. Others are coming into the African waters, stealing up all the fish flying them through the Chinese or South Korean vessels or lab labeling, labeling, packaging, and taking it right back up into Europe. Now, that's a lot of source of income that's being lost for the African continent. You know what I'm saying? And they were showing uh, bananas coming out of the Cameroon, uh, Ghana, everything. Now, why in the hell... <laughs> We can't grow stuff to benefit ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what sweet juice and mama and sweet daddy going to do, okay? We're going to grow stuff that's going to benefit ourselves. And if we got any excess, you know what I'm saying, we'll sell that to others. 
not the other way around. Sell the excess to others and keep the little minor stuff for us. You know what I'm saying? That that that's a recipe for failure. So anyway, guys, uh, here you are. You know this is pretty much what I've done uh, today. I've cleaned this out a little bit, and I've got to clean it out at the land too now because I've let it just stocked up. You know we didn't we didn't envisualize uh, all the vehicles uh, going down and having to go through uh, different stuff to get them, you know, ordering parts from America. But look at these papayas right here. Look at these bad boys. One, two, three, four. It's a bunch in there. And these bad boys are going to go into the ground a lot sooner than what we've done in the past. Before, we had papayas growing that were in the buckets for like, I'm seriously, guys, for about two years. And they were bearing fruit and everything. And we thought we was hot shot and doing all kind of stuff. And then we got them out there and put them in the wrong area. And that water hit them and bam. But that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Live and learn. So let me go ahead and finish this on up right here so Sweet Daddy can move on to another task today. Perhaps we might even run out to the land and check in on Raheem. All right. Till later. Bye. It's getting, it's